Hello designers and welcome to another 3D Studio Max tutorial with me, Tim Evans. So let's take a look at what we're going to be doing today. Here we have a small planet looking thing. So I've just taken a model and warped it around to make it look like we're flying over a very small planet. So let's jump into 3ds Max and see how we did this. So here in 3ds Max here we have a scene and all it is is I've got the MOD building right in the central London with all the surroundings and then all the, the buildings around London. Now what I've done for this is I've actually made all the buildings considerably taller than they actually are and that's so that when we look at the final composition we can see the buildings are much more effective. If I jump back to an earlier one that I've been working on you can see that with the buildings how they are normally they flatten all into the background so we want to bring them up to this more interesting effect so if we jump into 3ds max what we're going to do first is once we've got our scene set up which obviously you can create it however you want we're then just going to create a physical camera and now i need to select a new layer so i'm just going to bring up my layers and create a new layer just just call this camera and that's selected so that's the default so physical camera and that's from our create menu cameras standard and physical and we're just going to click in the middle and drag out and there we go so what we need to do is we're going to drag it right above the bit that we want to focus on but what you'll notice is that the camera's just going to look down to create a 360 degree view we need to keep the camera perfectly level. So what we're going to do is once we've dragged it out is we're going to try and select the camera and the target and normally the easiest way to do that is to hover over this center bit and then that will select both the target and the camera and then we can just drag that up. Now we want to center the camera over the top of our building that we're interested in and because I've got a lot of th in this scene it makes things quite difficult so I'm going to select cameras from up here and then all I can have to do is hover over and then it makes it easier because it's not going to try and select anything else so let's put that roughly in the center and check what it's called and that's camera 10 so I'm just going to click on it push C to jump into its view and okay you can't see much but that's not a problem what we're going to do is we're going to open up our V-Ray properties as we're going to be rendering this with V-Ray and there are other ways to do it with different uh, renderers but for today we're going to look at V-Ray so we're going to click our render setup up the top and if we bring this into the middle we want to go into V-Ray and we're going to change the camera so if we minimize everything else to make it easy to see what you're going to want to do is have a camera you're going to select spherical and you're going to click tick the override FOV for field of view and type 359.9 normally you can put 360 in but sometimes it doesn't always render that properly so we're just going to go with that and we're going to go back to the common tab and we're going to make it a 2 by 1 aspect ratio which is the best way to make a 360 degree view so all you've got to do is that you can set all the other settings up however you like and let's just run a sample and click render so you can see we've got this 360 degree view and that's just going to render out quickly and this is what we're going to use to create our uh, mini planet so let's jump back when that's finished and there we have the final image let's just refresh in and okay so what we're going to do now is we're just going to save this image click save and what we're going to do is if we just label it as test and just a JPEG is fine as I'm not going to be doing much editing but you can save it as a TIFF if you want more control in Photoshop so and then we're just going to jump into Photoshop 
and we're going to do Control O to open and we're going to open our test file which comes in like this so what we're going to do now is a few little setup steps and first you're going to go into image and image size and you want to untick this so that it's not constrained in the property properties and then we're going to make sure it's square so 352 this is how I've rendered mine yours might be different but we're just going to make that square and what it's going to do is it's going to distort the whole image to push it into a square and that's fine so the next step you've got to do is flip it over so we're just going to click the lock to unlock it we're going to do control and T and then we're just going to flip it upside down now there is a reason for this and it's just the way that Photoshop uses the uh, the warp tool so once we've done that we're going to jump into filter we're going to go to distort and polar coordinates we click on that and we'll zoom out and there we have it so that's just a rectangular to polar and click OK and there we have it all we need to do now is we can add a few curves and comp adjustments on top just to get it how we like and we could add some levels if we wanted to just to darken some bits up and there you've got the sun in the background so obviously we've rendered this out with a HDR map and that warps the sky around the background now if you wanted to render it without the HDRI then that would be much easier to then drop in lots of them and you could create quite an interesting effect so there we have it so one other thing that I'm just going to try I haven't actually tested this beforehand but we're going to try and remove this background now that it's all actually baked in now if we jump back into our 3ds max uh, and free rate should have also rendered out an alpha now what we're going to do is if we just save this and we'll call this test alpha and we'll get to save that as a JPEG as well and just save same settings again and if we jump back into Photoshop now I'm just going to open the alpha test alpha and I've actually recorded an action doing the same thing but you could just repeat the same thing that you've done before so I'm just going to play that and what it should do is drop it all straight in and then I can go Control A and Control C jump into our other view and what I'm going to do is just paste that on top and I'm just going to do Control A and Control C again and hide that and if I jump into channels what you can do is create a new alpha channel and paste that in there and this is the easiest way to do it then we can just hold down Control and if you click on the image down in the corner and then that will select our alpha channel perfectly and if we jump back to where we were before what we can do is delete our original layer jump back over to layer 0 and while we've still got our alpha channel selected what we're going to do is hit on the mask tool add mask and there we have it so we could create our own background behind that let's see come over here gradient tool and if we just select the sphere like that and what we're going to do is we're just going to modify our colors just a bit okay and drag that in and there we have it and you can move this around however you want you could duplicate them make them a bit smaller rotate them round and it looks like you're flying through a scene with all these different objects in and there we have it so if you like this tutorial if there's anything you want to know just drop us a comment down below otherwise I'll see you in the next one